All right, folks, we got another go watch for you today. Uh, Netflix, Hulu, those guys, they tend to get upset and either just completely block my videos or get them taken down if I have their footage up there. So I'm going to try and do the trailer so that you can kind of visually see the anime I'm talking about. And the rest of it's going to be probably Final Fantasy footage with uh, little stills of the characters dotted throughout whenever I'm talking about them. Uh... This is pretty much what the show is anyway, just, you know, a JRPG, the anime. Uh, that said, let's get into this. Ikiteru, sore tomo, mou shinda kana boku. Dou shite boku ga kurushima na kya nara nai nda? Boku ga nani o shita? Konna zetsubou shika nai tokoro de, ore wa nani o nozonde. いきて帰ること。うち。それを邪魔するものは全て敵。理不尽を知る全てを俺は殺す。久しぶりに痛みを感じない。やっぱり魔物の憎くったせいで、その特性を手に入れしまったんだな。そうだ。俺は敵だ
The last big thing that happens this season is a battle with this weird witch lady that traps the classmates in a dungeon. The thief in the group manages to escape and ask Hajime to do the job for them. He does, and that's really it. No real drama to it or anything. A nothing character dies, but that's it. And to close out the season, Horny Vampire lets Horny Schoolgirl join the group because they needed to have some drama set up for season two. Hajime is the only character in this show, dead serious. He's the only one that has any real depth to him, but it's like an American comic book, let me explain. So think like Spider-Man for an example. He starts off dweebus sure, but when he originally put on Spider-Man costume in the first comic, he was selfish, didn't care about helping others, and was in it for his own personal gain. Then Uncle Ben dies, arguably at his hand, and he learns that classic lesson. But then from there on, he's pretty much the Spidey we all know and love. I mean, he'll go through some trials and tribulations like the death of Gwen Stacy, but he hasn't really stopped being the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. That's pretty much what's happening here. He was just this generic anime high school boy, but then some really nasty stuff happens to him and he becomes the angry back alley version of Dante from Devil May Cry. From the time he and the horny vampire leave the first dungeon, he's this jaded, cynical, superpowered jerk face. I think he can be summed up in a line by one Captain Mal, I look after me and mine. If you're part of his posse, he will go out of his way to help you and make sure you're alright. If not, he really doesn't care until his harem won't stop bugging him to help. You do have his harem. I guess they count. They're really just there so the viewers can oogle the barely-dressed rabbit girl and get tingling in their pants from the BDSM dragon girl. They're not characters, they're fan service. Credit where it's due though, Hajime makes it blatant he and the horny vampire are a couple, but for the sake of humor, he's gotta have all the other ones chomping at his sweet edgelord sausage. And like I said, they really serve no other purpose. It's apparent from the first dungeon he's in, the only one who has any real use in combat is the horny vampire. Everyone else is redundant. There's also the other classmates. Again, they don't matter. They're an excuse for the fish out of water setting, and that's it. Heck, he doesn't even go after the guy who tried to kill him. He's just over them, and much like our main protagonist, I'm over them from the first episode. The 3D mix in the animation is bad, I always hate seeing it, I don't know why it's considered an option nowadays, we had giant robots and the like fighting it out back in the day, didn't need 3D then. And it looks way better without, specifically the character animations all look like they're actually supposed to interact with the big monsters when it's all drawn together. There's no awkward landing on the back of it only for the 2D character to seem to hover on top of a 3D character that are moving in completely different paces. I didn't like it in the beginning of the season when they would constantly check in with the other students. I don't care about them, Hajime doesn't care about them, why do we need to keep seeing them? So that we know one of them is getting a little paranoid after he tried to kill Hajime? But correct me if I'm wrong, he has next to no screen time with Hajime when they meet up again, so there was really no payoff for it. Just no one cares. This also has kind of a shield hero problem. Okay, so with shield hero, the thing keeping me invested was seeing how the princess and king get their comeuppance. Everything else was generic anime, but man, I really wanted to see the bad guys get theirs. After that's resolved though, nothing keeps me in shield hero anymore because now it's generic. Similar situation here. The one thing I wanted to see was his reunion with his classmates and what happens with the guy who tried to kill him. And as mentioned, Hajime doesn't really care. At this point, the show is what I would consider generic now. I'm glad they don't beat around the bush with Hajime and his ladies. He's sleeping with the vampire, they just come out and say it. And even though all the other members of his harem want him, he explicitly tells them he's not interested. I like just how much junk Hajime went through in the beginning. This is probably the most convincing character change I think I've seen in a modern anime. And like I said, it's more of a comic book origin story character arc in that it's over right away. He becomes slightly less jerkish as things progress with his trigger being betrayal. If you're a sexy something or other and you've been betrayed or manipulated, chances are he'll have your back. I've been assured this is just in the anime and the source book goes into way more detail on him and his character in case you're interested. I really like how the biggest reason he's so overpowered is he has guns and other technology from advanced time. That's a really cool idea, and I'm one I'm surprised I haven't seen before. Sure, his blue mage powers help, but the crux of his abilities are the modern weapons. But this is also halfway a curse too, because shooty shooty bang bang is all he really does, and I could easily guess how each encounter would play out. On a related note, I'm pretty sure the writer has never seen a gun in real life,
life because the cast should be death by now, especially after the battle with the CGI army, because as we all know, tinnitus is very bad for the ears. So, it, it definitely gets a go watch from me, definitely gets the recommendation. Soft recommendation, I will say soft recommendation. The only reason I'm really doing the video anyway is so that I can tell... <laughs> You know, my friend who said, oh man, watch this, watch this, so I can convince him to go watch Baki and Kengan Ashura. And Kengan Ashura and Baki are both just as shallow as this, especially Baki, but I don't know, I, I enjoy them more. But, uh, yep. Ari Fata, blah, 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 whatever the title, elongated title is. It's, uh, it's good enough to watch season one. I'm probably not going to check out season two, though. Doesn't, uh, doesn't have anything else to keep me going. That's it. Uh, Y'all have a great day.